I read that first passage, uh, Leela. How does she strike that balance between uh, sort of realizing that the pressures of the industry, whether it is the time that she moves to Delhi and faces whatever pressures that she may, uh, how does how how do we know that there is a sort of a dilemma in terms of her wanting to do what she loves doing the most, but maybe not getting the best out of it? Uh, like the line that I spoke about when I read the introduction, the glamorous yet demanding. What is uh, what is Leila's uh, sort of? Uh, how does she view the whole thing as a larger picture? How what keeps her going? Because is, is it something that she sort of looks at doing? It's something that she's passionate about, but just can't get to the right place, or maybe you know. It, it's just bad luck that's sort of drawing, putting her down every time. Sure, sure. I think Leela doesn't balance anything. I think she's confused from the get-go. And uh, like many people in their 20s and 30s, she's really lost. She's trying to figure out what she wants. Um, and she wants to be an artist. And she has, and she has that passion for theater, for performance arts. And she maybe thinks that modeling or something is an extension of that. You'd have to read that to find out. Um, but she does not find balance. She's struggling with it throughout the entire, the entire story. Much of what, and I use modeling and the fashion industry as a sort of a, a story plot tool to express a lot of the insecurities that women and men and just our generation is dealing with. It just happened that I had access to this particular um, subject matter. But uh, no, she absolutely never finds balance. That's, that's where the masala comes in. <laughs> Um, what we'd also like to know, maybe if, you, if, if you'd like to read further, is uh, through Leela's journey uh, through India. Uh, that's a completely uh, different world for her. How does she go? And uh, did, your, uh, did you have, did you draw any personal references while writing? Because you, uh, uh, you've travelled a lot and uh, you've had your roots in India as well. Uh, what kind of references did you draw when you when sketching uh, Leela's character, especially? Uh, the, the, the times that she sort of spent in Mumbai, in, in India, sorry. Yes. Sure. Uh, so I think the only thing that Leela and I share in common is our, our families. She has a brother, I have a brother, and she has parents that are, are fairly level-headed, <laughs> um, fairly conservative um, people, and that was probably where I drew her background. Um, beyond that, she's completely different. I've lived in Milan, Paris, UK, um, New York, LA, and so a lot of that, um, it's certainly here, but I've spent enough time in Delhi and Bombay to understand that it's all very universal. The things that happen in the fashion industry and things that happen in, in similar environments are, are universal, whether it's Bombay or New York. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I pulled from what I saw. A lot of my friends went through some of the things that are in this book. Um, it's not an autobiography at all. <laughs> um, but I can read you a short, much shorter excerpt. Um, where she finally uh, is introduced into the industry through a talent agent. Um, and, what I, and, and I will actually tell you that this was inspired by a real woman that I met in LA, um, and I just found her so terrifying. She was such a powerful woman. <laughs> and I just found it amazing that the boss lady is running the show, and so this is definitely um, inspired by somebody that I met and was scared of. Um, let me just make sure it's not too long. That Leela has walked on a runway by accident and uh, she wasn't meant to be there. She's very thin because of the grief of her recent breakup and depression and whatever and so she just happened to look the part <laughs> that was necessary. Uh, this woman, Vanita, who is the head of a, a talent agency, sees her and invites her in for a meeting. Uh, they're left waiting for about 45 minutes before they actually uh, have the, the woman come in. Uh, so she's just walked in right now. Vanita appeared to be in her early 50s. Her flawless grooming oozed luxury. Her lips were subtly painted a matte maroon that highlighted the hint of color on her cheeks. She left her eyes unlined with light mascara on her short lashes. Parted on the left side, her brown hair fell just past her chin, layers framing her severe face. Thank you for coming in, Miss Kapoor. My name is Vanita. No mention or any apology for the tardiness. Benita's blunt authority and chilly business tone demanded both respect and a little fear. The dark wrinkled skin and the faint sag under her eyes collectively added to, the, to her inapproachability. Her tailored cream pantsuit and dust pink ruffled blouse gave her boxy frame some feminine contours. She gave them both a quick nod, 
background, Lila is sitting with her cousin Sonal. She, go, she gave them both a quick nod before igno ignoring Sonal completely. And you are Lila Kapoor from America. Her eyes moved across Lila's face and body. Are you a professional model? How long are you in India? Lila's tongue stuck to the roof of her mouth. Her lips remained shut. She froze, startled by the sudden interrogation. Lila and Sonal had tried to prep for this meeting to anticipate her questions. They had come up with no satisfactory answers to the exact questions that Benita had spat at her. The reasoning problem-solving part of her brain had shut down. On autopilot, she answered the first things that came to her mind. Yes, no, a few months. Lila stared at Benita, her hand still hovering out in an anticipated handshake that never materialized. Benita didn't blink. One side of her lip curled into a crooked half-smile. Lila felt like she had passed the first stage of the cross-examination. Then, when Benita's lips parted, Lila understood this woman didn't just mean business. She also enjoyed the discomfort in her opponent's eyes. How do you know Gudlu Singh? He's the designer that she walked for. Benita stared, started. She pulled out a chair to sit down, all the while maintaining eye contact. Sonal's friend, Lila gestured, in, gestured her head in Sonal's direction, too afraid to look away. She followed Benita's lead and also took a seat. Do you have an agent? Joe Goldman. Which agency? Stellar artist. What do you do? Actor. When did you arrive? Last week. Why were you on the runway yesterday? Luck. What? Vanita tripped over the last answer, seeming to fumble over a rare moment of confusion. Lila's eyes flicked to Sonal, unsure what to make of this favorable turn in the conversation. She expected the momentous event to pass quickly. I was helping Sonal backstage at the show when Gulu needed a last minute replacement. Lila clasped her hands on the table, prepared to continue speaking in full sentences. He liked my look and put me in the show. I had no agenda, but today I'm talking to you. She hoped the last bit of flattery might smooth some of Vanita's thorns. I don't know what else to call this. She searched Vanita's face for some reaction. Vanita's icy gaze pen penetrated Lila's skull. She took a deep breath, broke the, minute, broke the minute of elapsed silence. She reached forward to push a button on the conference room phone. She left, bring in the papers. When the timid assistant had deposited the material and closed the door, Benita pulled out a newspaper from the bottom of the stack. Without speaking, she unfolded the front page and laid it directly in front of them. Uh, background, they had uh, posted a picture of a dress that she was wearing, saying, model wears designer and balloons dress. Yes, Miss Kapoor, I would call this an infinite stroke of luck. Lila felt the sting of the implied insult. She summoned her voice and got straight to the point, using as much caution as she could. Miss Reddy, I'm not sure I understand why you wanted to see me. I wanted proof that that Gulu boy was full of shit. This is proved. She looked at both of their faces. I like to know who's who in my industry. I know every single face that was in the show last night. Some were my models, others I don't care to represent. She leaned back in her chair, her voice lowered. You, I don't know. Benita put two fingers on the side of her face and rested her cheek on her palm. And now this, she motioned at the paper. You, Miss Leela Kapoor, have my attention. Uh, thank you, Leela stammered. Sonal sat mute beside her. Benita continued in her business monotone. So you're an actress? Leela nodded. Let me be frank. I've never, I've never seen your work or heard of your agency. If you just took a few months off to be a tourist in India, you clearly have nothing urgent waiting for you back in California. Leela accepted the invisible slap silently. I'm sure you know who we are. Benita held back, sat back in her chair. Of the top 10 A-list talent in the film industry, six are associated with X in some capacity. Of the top models in India, all are, all are on Xfinity's roster. Of the top ad campaigns in the country, the majority come to us first. She snorted, amused by her own statistics. Those who don't use our talent usually cannot afford our fees. Lila noticed the subtle scent of Anita's perfume, perfume. Citrusy, vaguely masculine. She couldn't place the fragrance. Your luck has put you on a runway, a front page, and in my office. I want to test how long it takes for this luck to dry up for you. She pushed forward the remaining pages from the stack in front of her. These are papers for a trial period as a new face for X. In two months, we'll know if you have what this industry wants. Yeah, kind of uh, the way you built on characters uh, uh, is, is, is quite commendable. And I, I would love to ask you, um, when we talk about the industry abroad and the industry um, in India, in Mumbai, in Delhi, um, besides the fact that it is at some point a very uh, common, universal way in which they work, is there anything that you think uh, sets uh, the standards abroad uh, apart and the ones uh, in India uh, on a different level altogether? India's fashion industry is taking a lot more risks, um, whereas the, ma the maturity of 
in Milan or, or Paris or whatever, it, they've done a lot of the crazy stuff before, and so they have a more um, they have more structure, I guess. Whereas there's much more experimentation happening here. In terms of uh, the industry standards of the model sizes and all, that's completely standard. Um, yeah, I, I didn't see any difference. You have the same very, very tall women, very slim, very, I mean, I didn't see any difference in what I've seen in New York or Milan and what I saw backstage in, in Delhi. That uh, I would like to delve into. Uh, uh, the summary that I read uh, spoke about uh, how the main protagonist gets into a uh, uh, gets into a sort of a issue with uh, with her with her size, and how does that sort of uh, lean forward? Because in a way, in India, we've had uh, uh, we've had a sort of a dawn of this this term as as we coin it, as we call it, the size zero. Sure. It's 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 been good to some. It's been weak to the others. Um, how does Leela take it? I mean, is it an intentional thing? It, it, is is it something that she tries to fight? Is it something that she's comfortable with? Is it a dilemma that continues right towards the end of the book? How does it affect her growth? I shall do exact, the exact answer, but uh, like I answered your other, earlier question, she struggles with balance throughout the book. Um, she's not a size zero. The industry expects a size zero. Um, <coughs> she sees this as an extension of her craft of, of performance arts, and so she, she believes this is a character. And if she's going to be this character, then she's going to do it with uh, integrity. Uh, and if that means crash dieting or any other means, then that's something that she's done in her in her career previously in LA anyway, to um, you know prepare herself for a role. Uh, so although she doesn't find the balance, or she keeps looking for the balance, <laughs> she's not comfortable with that whole size zero thing, despite her her grief depressed skinny body that looks pretty good. 